Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Since July 2024, checkboxes have been made available to the public, and there's a lot that can be done with this new feature. In this video, we're going to be going through everything that you need to know about this new feature and the cool things that you can do with them. Inserting a checkbox has never been easier. What used to require enabling the developer tab, navigating complex menus, and inserting a checkbox from there is now a simple two-click process. With the cell selected in our spreadsheet, we can go up to the insert tab and we can see the checkbox command right here. When we click the checkbox command, we can see a checkbox instantly appears right within the cell. We can also use the keyboard shortcut Alt N C B to insert a checkbox as well. Taking a look at the cell, we see a checkbox of course, but if we look closely at the formula bar, we see that the actual value behind it is the Boolean value false. We can show this by going to the Home tab and then clearing the formats, and then we can see the word false in the cell. Let's undo our last action to bring back the checkbox, and now if we check off our checkbox, we can see in the formula bar the Boolean value true. And what this means is that a checkbox is actually a visual representation of the Boolean values true and false, where an empty checkbox is the same as the Boolean value false, and the check mark is the same as a Boolean value true. Here are some extra things to know about these new checkbox features. To insert multiple checkboxes at once, all we have to do is select all the cells we want checkboxes in, go up to the Insert tab, and then click Checkbox. To check off multiple checkboxes at once, all we have to do is press the spacebar on our keyboard. To delete a checkbox, all we have to do is press the Delete key on our keyboard until the checkboxes go away. And the last thing is when you use checkboxes in structured Excel tables, when entering in new data at the bottom of our table, we can see that the checkbox is automatically added to the new row. Now that we've covered the basics, let's talk about formatting checkboxes and using them to help format other cells. Here's the data set from a previous video on creative ways to use conditional formatting in Excel. Rather than having a status that contains the words complete, in progress and not started, let's replace them with checkboxes so that we can just check off completed tasks. So to do this, I'm just going to highlight the contents of this column and then we're going to use the clear all command. With our column still highlighted, we can go up to the insert tab and then insert a checkboxes. Now when it comes to formatting checkboxes, you can think of them as very similar to formatting regular text, which includes things like changing the size of the checkbox, changing the color of the checkbox, so we're just changing it to green, and we can also change the alignment so we can make it to the left or to the right or keep it in the middle. Since the checkbox sits in the cell and they represent true and false values, we can still use them to help with creating conditional formatting rules. If I go ahead and check the first checkbox, expecting the row to be grayed out, we can see that nothing happens. So let's take a look at our conditional formatting rules and see what's up. Well, right now, this formula is checking to see if the value in cell E2 is equal to the word completed. That obviously isn't the case anymore, as we've just replaced the entire column with checkboxes, which are going to be either the Boolean value true or the Boolean value false. So with that, we can go ahead and edit this rule, and we're going to remove any mention of completed, and we could write the Boolean value true here, but then this formula would just be checking if the value in cell E2 is equal to the value true, which is a bit repetitive. So this full formula could actually just be simplified down to the cell reference E2 all by itself, because when we read this bold part here, it says to format values where this formula is true. And since checkboxes are only visual representations of the value true and false, we can just check for the value in the cell. So from here, let's click OK. And I just noticed here that the range that is applied to is missing column E. That's probably from clearing the original column. So we're just going to put the column E reference back and then we'll click OK. And now we can see your conditional formatting has returned to us. And if I was to check another task off, the conditional formatting is applied. Now that we've covered the basics in formatting, Let's go over how to use these new checkboxes in Excel formulas. Our first objective here is to count how many tasks have been completed. So in this cell, we're going to be using the COUNTIFS function, and our criteria range 1 is going to be our status column, 
and the criteria is going to be the value true because we know that checkboxes are really just visual representations of Boolean values true and false. Pressing enter, we see the result 15 shown to us, which coincides to the tasks here that have been checked off. Alternatively, we can use the sum function where I'm just gonna highlight all the cells in the status column. And if I was to highlight it like this in the formula bar, we see a bunch of trues and falses. But if I multiply that array of trues and falses by one and highlight this, that converts those trues and falses into ones and zeros. And then when I close the function off and then press enter, we also get the value 15 returned to us as well. The next objective is to count how many high priority tasks have been completed. So here we're gonna be using the count this function again. And our criteria range one is going to be the status column where we check to see if the value is true. And then our criteria range two is going to be our priority column where we check to see if the value in the cell is equal to the word high. Then pressing enter, we get the value five returned to us, which coincides to these tasks. Our next objective is to filter to show incomplete tasks. So here we're gonna be using the filter function where the array is going to be the contents of a table. And in the include argument, we want to include rows where the status is equal to the value false. Closing that off and pressing enter, we see these tasks shown to us which coincides with these tasks that have not been checked off. Our last objective is to filter to show incomplete high priority tasks. So here we're gonna be using the filter function where the array is going to be the contents of our table. And in the include argument, we're gonna be using the and operator. If you wanna see more details about this, you can click the video up here to check it out. So in the include argument, we're just gonna be checking to see if the priority is going to be equal to the word high and the status is equal to the value false. Pressing enter, we now get these two tasks which coincide with these two tasks here. Now that we've covered the basics, formatting, and how to use checkboxes and formulas, let's talk about how to use them in charts to make them easier to interact with. Here we have the finished product of an interactive chart where on the left side, we have the original data set of the product sold with this middle section here being the data that this bar chart over here is based on. Taking a closer look at the chart data, we can see that there are checkboxes and these checkboxes can be used to show or hide certain products on the chart. Now that we know what the finished product looks like, let's create it from scratch. All right, so here we just have the original data set shown to us. The first thing that we need to do is create our chart data. And to do that, I'm gonna start by copying and pasting the existing column headers and then just change the fill color behind it so it looks different. Next, we can insert checkboxes above our chart data column headers. So I'm gonna select the cells, go to insert, and then click on checkbox. Next, let's fill in the chart data but making sure that we only show data where certain checkboxes are checked off and therefore contain the value true. So here we're gonna enter in the if function and we're gonna to check to see if any of the values in this array here are equal to the value true. And if any of the values are true, we want to return the contents of our table. And if they're not true, aka false, we want to return an error because errors do not appear in Excel charts. Pressing enter, we get a bunch of errors shown to us, which makes sense because none of the checkboxes are checked off. All right, so let's test this out by checking off some of the checkboxes. So we'll obviously want to be able to show the date, and now we see the dates shown here. And let's just select product A and B, leaving C returning errors. Now that we've finished with our chart data, let's go ahead and create the chart. So first, I'm gonna select the products like this and their values too. And then using the quick analysis command, we can select chart and then select clustered column. Then we can move this over here and make it a little bit bigger. And here we can only see bars for product A and product B. And now if I was to check off product C, 
we can see product C shown to us. If you're interested in seeing more about cluster column charts, I have a video about it up here. Now that we have the chart created, we just need to set the x-axis here to be the date in the day column, which I can do by right-clicking, going to select data, and then clicking edit here, and then we're just going to select all the dates. Click OK, click OK, and now our chart is created and we can show or hide whatever products we want. And a bonus tip while we're on this topic is this even works when you add more data to the original data set. Let's say that I want to add a new row here. So let's do January 11th, 2025. We can see your chart automatically update to include that new day. And if it was to copy some values over, our chart automatically updates. And those were some cool things that you can do using this new checkbox feature in Microsoft Excel. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll see you all in the next video.